Hi, welcome back to Mr. Mobile PC Blog. My name's Hugo Ortega. Now I'm pretty excited about what I'm gonna, what, about what I'm gonna show you today, and that is a hybrid device. Now as per the name dictates, hybrid, you've got two functions in the one, if you like. So we've got a notebook style device, so that's a traditional sort of what they call clamshell, and we've got a tablet style device. If, so if it's down to hand gestures, you've got your tablet here, and you've got your notebook. So it's pretty exciting. And what I'm talking about is the ASUS Vivo Tab. Voila. Now ASUS has done a nice job with this device and I'll show you why in a second. So what is a hybrid? Let's go into that first. As you can see at first you've got a regular notebook. So keyboard and screen. As per any sort of notebook that you carry around or have been for many many years now. The benefit of a hybrid is that, sure, you've got your touch screen, so we can log into Windows now with a swipe of a finger, but have a look at this. Voila. The two portions come apart to give you a tablet and the notebook still style device as per and when you need it. Now, what makes this device different to something like a Microsoft Surface tablet that we've all seen in action? Hopefully some of you in stores have bought them, hopefully some of you have played in stores, or other people have shown you, but you may have seen on, on TV at least. The reality about the Surface tablet is it's a tablet with a clip-on keyboard. Now you may think this is the same. The benefit with this particular ASUS Vivo tab is that the keyboard is also a battery. So you actually have a, um, two batteries in the device. The tablet itself has a 25 watt hour battery and that's good for about eight hours. The keyboard itself has another um, six watt hour battery. Um, so you've got an, an additional, uh, sorry, 22 watt hour battery. So you've got an additional um, six or so um, hours of battery life. In total, it's a grand, of a grand total of about 14 hours of battery life by using both. And the good news is that it's, um, it's, it's on a need to basis. And the dominant uh, pairing is down to the, the keyboard battery. So if you're using the keyboard battery, the tablet battery is not in use. When you undock, you're back to tablet battery and obviously whatever you've um, got remaining in the tablet stays in the tablet. When you're not using the keyboard, it uses that only. So it's really neat that way. If we take a closer look at the keyboard, this is what they call an invisible hinge style device, which when you're in um, keyboard only mode, which really is irrelevant because you're really gonna be carrying around a keyboard only, um, you have a quite an ugly hinge. Where it becomes a, a, a thing of beauty is when you dock the tablet, the hinge is truly invisible. So nothing clunky or ugly holding up the tablet other than a, a, a little seam down here and really nothing from front to back. So that's a really lovely hinge that way. And you could hear that it docked and the reason you hear that is because you're talking to a couple of things. One is the charging port here. And second on the other side is the USB port. And that's really the only port you've got on, on the keyboard itself. So battery, charging port, and USB port. And all of a sudden you're a notebook again. So let's go back to tablet now. You may have noticed we're running, running Windows 8, but if you take a closer look, we're actually running, running Windows RT. Now for, you, for those of you that don't know what Windows RT is, it's the equivalent style solution to an Apple iPad solution. In that, these devices now talk mostly to a, a, an app, a, a marketplace style shop and, and in Windows case it's called the store. So you can see the green logo there. It's called the store. And in the Windows store you can actually buy apps and there's a handful of thousand apps now and Windows have been pushing for many many months now to get as many thousands of apps in there. So if you're an application developer it's really a good time to get involved with Windows because they're really helping get your apps launched. Um, these devices, going back to how they work, Windows RT devices load applications through the market store that they have there, through the Windows store. And, and the reason they do that is a couple of reasons. One is we're trying to make these devices battery life as, as long as possible, but secondly, as look at these devices, making them as thin as possible. And by removing local storage, the need, and by reducing the processor capacity, it means that we don't... Almost dropped it. <laughs> it means you don't need a system fan in there, so you don't have that howling noise, and you don't have the extra space that comes with those fans, and so you end up with a nice thin device. And just to give you a comparison, 
Here's my um, uh, Samsung Galaxy Note telephone. So it's a phone, it's my mobile cellular phone. But look when I put the two devices together, my phone is actually thicker, thicker than the tablet itself. Now that's pretty amazing. The fact that a phone is thicker than a tablet. Um, now I've been working with tablet computers for over 11 years now, 10 to 11 years. And to know that we're at a place where I've got a device with PowerPoint, Excel, Word, um, and, and something like OneNote that comes with it too, as a fully functioning tablet, but I'm this thin and light now, um, uh, it makes me truly excited. So let's just take a look at some of the applications. And if you look at the taskbar at the bottom, you do have uh, Internet Explorer, uh, your regular file manager there, so um, Windows Explorer. You've got Word, Excel, OneNote, PowerPoint, or PowerPoint OneNote, I can't really see here, or Word. But they're all down there, and we can launch pretty quickly. So let's launch Word, let's launch Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. So I'm actually launching all four right now, and I'm going back to the Windows screen. But let's go across back to where we were. And let me just show you, um, because it's, it, it's a brand new machine, it's sort of telling me to set up defaults. So you, what you can do is you can scroll through very, very quickly uh, and use the Windows um, RT processor to multitask. You can also do it by yourself with your finger. So you can actually go across uh, and start typing um, or, or not typing, depending on what you want to do. Um, and you can open up multiple tasks. Um, when it comes to the tablet itself, um, we're running an IPS display, but it's called an IPS Plus. So it's not full high definition, but you do have that high definition result, high resolution result. Um, and the Plus symbol itself talks about the screen brightness. So the Plus gives it a really nice, crisp, bright display. And we're in direct sunlight here, and the fact that you can still see it is a really lovely thing. So it's, um, it's a nice, bright display. You've got a, a NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor inside, it's a quad core, so four cores inside. Um, you've got two gigabytes of RAM, um, and, and you can see it's a very, very quick machine to work with that way. Um, and um, that's what gives us all this ability to do um, fast swiping. You can even do things like um, docking applications on the left and right. So if I call up a separate application, um, I could literally grab the calendar now and bring it over to my left and dock it while I'm multitasking with something else. So I could go back into, for example, just the desktop and, and the application that was last open. Um, you've got a front camera. So if you can see it there, and that's a, um, a two megapixel front camera. And on the rear, with a little flash as well, you've got an eight megapixel rear camera. So really, really nice that way. Um, when you compare it to uh, other devices, that are not Windows RT, what's the difference? Well, the difference is really size, as I alluded to before. While with Windows RT, you're talking about cloud-based computing, you save your documents really in the cloud. And what does that look like? So if I go back to my Word document and I type something quickly and I hit File and then uh, Save As, you'll see that my SkyDrive is, is in, the, in the file drive there. So they're looking to get you to save your documents in the cloud. And that doesn't mean in the Cumulus Nimbus as we learnt in year five. It means in the internet. Um, and that's housed by people like Microsoft, Amazon, Google. There's cloud versions really everywhere now. Um, and so you're storing your cloud information um, so that you can retrieve it somewhere else. A companion, companion device like this, and the reason they call them companion devices is that it's not ideal to be your fully fledged desktop replacement yet but it is ideal as a, I'm out on the road, want to get some work done, a lot of work done, especially with Office in there, but I want to also access it later. You do your document, you save it to the cloud, and you can come back to your desktop and call it up from your desktop, for example, and start working there. So that's what cloud-based computing is all about. Once you want to do more in these devices, you've got to go for something like a, a hybrid like the Fujitsu Q702. Now I know many of you will be desperate for me to showcase this to you um, right now, but I'm not going to. The reality is that um, this device uh, is reserved for another, um, another video shortly. Um, and now this device is a fully fledged Windows device, so it has Windows 8 Professional on there. But when I put the two together, 
Look at the thickness difference. So instantly we're double the thickness of the with the Fujitsu Q702 versus the Windows RT based Vivo tab. We're also, so if I turn them around, much larger in size. So you can see the Fujitsu is sticking out the top and obviously the screen of Fujitsu is sticking out the side. So apart from width, you've got a, a, those dimensional differences as well. You've got over a kilo in this device, but if we go back to the ASUS, we've only got 800 grams um, on the ASUS device. And the screen size difference, you're not talking about that much, 10 inch versus 11 inch, um, approximately. So you're not talking about massive differences in screen size either. So there's a lot of merit in going for a Windows RT based device. In fact, I'd hate to see them killed off. I wish people were buying these more and more. I really think an RT based device makes a lot of sense in today's world. Especially when you, you know, I used to carry around these tablets and I started back in the day when they were over three kilos and you're down to now a, a sub one kilo, 850 gram style, fully fledged Windows based device or as fully fledged as most of us need on the road. Um, you're talking about a really exciting moment in time. So I will display the Fujitsu um, device to you further later, but for now I just want to use that as a nice comparison as well. So can you imagine being thinner than the phone and more mobile than a fully fledged um, notebook? Um, these style devices will be quite exciting. As we look around the physical device itself, there's not much going on so it won't take long. But in here under a little, little sort of flappy thing, You've got a, um, that's a technical word by the way, flappy thing. Um, so um, terminology throwing at you left, right and day here. So that's a micro HDMI port. Here is a micro SD card slot. So it comes with a cover obviously. This is where the SIM card slot goes because the Vivo tab as opposed to the Microsoft Surface tab has 3G as an option, which is great. Um, you've got your latch to release from the keyboard. As we swing around the bottom, these are the keyboard docking connectors, but also what ASUS did is there's a dongle supplied in the pack which allows you to connect to the bottom here and there's a USB port you can connect to the device. So if you're desperate to use USB, you can buy these devices very, very easily. As we swing around the last side, very minimalistic, volume up and down and a um, earphone jack there. We do have a nice set of speakers. At the top there's power. We do have a nice set of speakers. Um, and they are, I don't know, oh, they're just on the side here at the back. Uh, if I go nice and close there and get some reflection away. There's your speakers. They work quite nicely, nothing wrong with the speakers. Um, and, and so you've got a, a USB enabled micro SD card accessible um, device with two sets of batteries, um, keyboard and here. So you're talking about a really lovely portable experience. If you're after installing applications yourself, do look at the, the larger Windows professional style devices. Microsoft soon to uh, release their Surface Pro device. Um, but Dell and the like and Fujitsu with the Q702, they'll all have a hybrid style Windows professional solution. But like I said, I really like the RT based solutions. No matter what anyone says, um, quad core in your, in your device and this thin is something you've got to give a look at if you're, if you're a road warrior in particular and you're, uh, you're out on the road a lot, these devices are really, really amazing to look at uh, and to function with. Um, so again, this has been Hugo Ortega from Mr. Mobile PC blog. Send me a message anytime you like. I'm always happy to chat. Um, on YouTube, we have lots of conversations going, but you can get me on, on Twitter, email, um, wherever you like. I'm really easy to find if you just Google Hugo Ortega. All the best, guys. Lots of hugs to you. Remember, stay mobile and be in touch.